Hello, and welcome to Why These Notes, Explorations in Music Theory. Um, those of you who've been following this channel for a while may know that I named the series Why These Notes because I wasn't satisfied when I was told to sort of memorize uh, that out of the 12 notes of the chromatic scale, these seven notes uh, were the major scale and these other seven notes were the minor scale. Um, so, um, you know, I figured there had to be a reason, those seven notes. Um, and I ended up reading really old books on music theory and, um, you know, learning sort of where all of these notes came from. And, and it turns out, actually, that before even we had the 12-tone chromatic scale, we had the seven notes of the major scale. So it's not like somebody took the 12 notes and selected these seven out of them. Um, we actually had the seven sort of before the 12, uh, and it's because we had those seven people sort of figured out that there needed to be notes um, in between some of them, um, and that's how we got to the 12-note scale that we have today. Uh, and the story actually starts um, a couple thousand years ago with Pythagoras. Uh, so yes, the guy who figured out how equilateral triangles work. Um, and the story is that he was um, walking around in the countryside and he passed a blacksmith shop. And the sound of the hammers hitting the anvil sounded good to him. It sounded melodic, it sounded harmonious. Uh, so he went into the blacksmith shop and he did a bunch of experiments on the hammers to try to figure out why you know, these specific hammers sounded good together. And it turns out that when he weighed the hammers, uh, the hammers that had uh, whole numbered ratios of weights to each other sounded good together. So one pound to two pounds, two pounds to three pounds, uh, and so on. Um, and uh, this, by the way, is part of the reason we call it a musical scale, because the idea is you can literally weigh the notes. Um, so he went home to his workshop and he performed an experiment with lengths of string. He would nail one end to the board, to a board, and tie a weight to the other end. Uh, and the weight was to make sure there was equal tension on all of the different strings. And he would then vary the length of string by, you know, where he placed the, the nail. Um, and he would play them together. And the notes that sounded good together were different whole numbered ratios to each other. Uh, and here you can see Pythagoras uh, with bells that have weights that are different whole numbered ratios to each other. Uh, and he's playing an eight and a 16, uh, two to one ratio, which is um, an octave. So uh, I'm going to do similar sort of thing with you here. Uh, as you can see, there's a visual of a length of string going from left to right. Uh, and um, I'm, I, I superimposed a guitar fretboard on top of it. So you could see, you know, where all of the semitones would be. Um, so starting on the right side, uh, if you were to put your finger on any of those black lines, we would sort of shorten the string by that amount. So the length of the string is from the left side to, you know, wherever we're stopping our finger um, on the fingerboard. Um, and you can see the two to one ratio here is highlighted. That's the octave. Hopefully everybody knows that half of the length of string is an octave, uh, which is also double the ratio. Um, you know, so if this is A equals 440 is the full length of string, um, you know, 880 frequency, uh, you know, twice the frequency, half the length of string is the octave. Um, T in this case means tonic uh, because it is, you know, we're, we're building a scale. Uh, so that's one to one, the full length of string. And 8VA means octave, it's half the length of string. So uh, so we have this. What is the next obvious place to go? Two thirds. And again, you could see uh, the grayed out section over here is the section that, that you know we're not ringing out. Um, so one third of the length of string is, is uh, the musical fifth, um, you know, the diatonic fifth. Um, and because uh, anytime you sort of double a length of string, it's the same note in a different octave. We could do one third or we could do two thirds. In this case, we're doing two thirds of the length of string is the musical fifth, two to three. Um, by the way, one of the most frequent questions I get here is, you know, why, what do you mean when you say a fifth is two to three? And then what do you mean uh, when you're adding two notes together, why do you multiply? So we're going to answer these questions. So um, the next obvious place to go from here would be uh, 
you know, from two to three, we go to, to three fourths, right? We have two thirds of the length of string. Um, but I want to point out that we already have that interval. We've already discovered this interval um, because, as we all know, the diff distance between a fifth and the octave is a fourth. So we could actually just sort of calculate this here. Uh, and as we can see, uh, three quarters of a uh, length of string is the musical fourth. Um, so if we start from the fifth, two thirds, and then we take three quarters of that, uh, we get the octave. So two thirds times three quarters, uh, two times three is six, three times four is 12. So that is six twelfths or one half is the octave. Um, so we've already discovered sort of the musical fourth this way, but that doesn't actually give us the location of the fourth, you know, on our full length of string. So what we do is we take that, um, you know, that ratio that we've discovered and stretch it out to the full length of string, three quarters, we now have the musical fourth. Um, and I want to take this moment to appreciate that we have all of the perfect intervals now. Right, you might think of the perfect intervals as "quote unquote," you know, the ones that are neither major nor minor. To me, uh, the perfect intervals are the fundamental building blocks of the major and minor scale. Um, what I, <laughs> in order to build the major scale, the way I describe it is, you play a major chord on um, one, four, and five, and that is how you build the major scale. Um, so these are the most fundamental building blocks. Uh, the next thing we need is, of course, uh, four fifths, the major third. Uh, and now we have every single ingredient we need to build both the major and minor scales. So something I would like to point out, uh, in the same way that when we discovered the fifth, uh, we took the distance between the fifth and the octave to derive the, uh, the fourth, we take the distance between the major third and the fifth to derive the minor third. So the minor third here, you could see is uh, five, six. Um, and, but like, you know, that ratio perfectly exists between the major third and the fifth. So again, we perform the same trick and we stretch it out and we now have the minor third as five fifths of the length of string. Um, we're going to disregard the minor third for a while because we're just building the major scale. Um, but here we already have all of the ingredients we need to build the major scale. Uh, I'm just going to hide the octave here to make it a little easier. Um, so we have uh, the fifth. Um, what happens if we want to figure out the major seventh? Well, as I said, uh, building a scale is basically building uh, a major chord on one, four, and five. So let's do that. Uh, if we want to build a major chord on the fifth scale, we need to add the major third. Uh, so the major third is four fifths of a length of string. We're already at two thirds, so we multiply the numbers together because you know we're sort of uh, multiplying fractions to get a, a smaller segment of string. Uh, so two thirds for the fifth and four fifths for the major third yields eight fifteenths. Uh, two times four is eight. Three times five is 15. Uh, the major seventh happens at eight fifteenths in the length of string. Um, and of course, you may know that the major second, the second is known as the fifth of the fifth because it is literally the fifth of the fifth. We take two thirds, uh, a length of string, and uh, again, we multiply it out by two thirds of a length of string and we get uh, four ninths. Um, four ninths is above an octave, it's less than a half. So in order to pull it down, um, you know, to, to the useful location as the second, we sort of just multiply that four by two to get eight and we get eight ninths is the major, uh, major second. So the last note that we need to derive is the sixth. Uh, and again, we're going to start with the fourth um, and build a major scale on the fourth. We uh, add the major third to the fourth, uh, so three quarters of the length of string, multiplied by four fifths of the length of string is 12 twentieths of the length of string. Three times four is 12, four times five is 20, 12 twentieths, you could simplify that to six tenths. Um, 
So now we have all of the notes in the major scale. We don't need to add a fifth to, a, to the fourth because we already know that that's the octave. Um, uh, but you know, if you wanted to do that, you know, that, that would be the octave. So we have the tonic, the octave, we have the fifth, we have on top of the fifth, the major third, we have on top of that, the ninth, which is the second, uh, we have the major third, we have the fourth, we have the sixth, we now have the entire musical scale, tonic, major second, major third, fourth, fifth, major sixth, major seventh, octave. And again, the perfect intervals, four and five, are perfect, not because they're neither major nor minor, but it's because they're the fundamental building blocks. We build a major chord on the tonic, one, three, five. We build a major chord on the fifth, five, seven, nine, which is also the second. And we build a major chord on the fourth, uh, four, six, and octave. Um, and that is how we build a major scale. All from simple ratios, and you could see and there's only a couple of times where we sort of have to add numbers together um, in order to um, derive other notes. Um, and then, you know, if we want to turn this into a minor scale, uh, we would simply add a minor third to the tonic, the fourth, and the fifth to derive the locations of the minor scale. Um, I'm not going to do that here, but, you know, you can imagine that that's how that might happen. Um, and then to get to all 12 notes in the scale, you just perform similar operations um and um you know th this is the way music was for uh you know thousands of years this is the way music was and it's only recently that we have these sort of 12 chromatic notes um that we consider to be like the 12 notes and nobody questions them and you sort of have to memorize which seven out of the 12 um you know form the major scale or the minor scale 12 major keys and 12 minor keys um, but this is basically how you build the major scale, uh, basically from a few fundamental building blocks. Why, when I say you're adding a fourth to a fifth, you're actually multiplying. It's because you're taking a fraction of a fraction, um, and you're multiplying that out. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. This is, yeah, my first video on this channel in something like six years. Um, it's, you know, a topic I've wanted to cover for a while and I have in various ways, but I think this is sort of the easiest, hopefully, to understand. It explains everything, hopefully, cleanly, you know, I hope, um, you guys understand, uh, at least things a little bit better. Uh, if not, you know, leave comments. I, I respond to most of my comments that are, you know, that where people are asking questions. Um, and I'm hoping to add a few more videos in the future, not too many, um, but, you know, if, if you want them, you know, go ahead and subscribe. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for watching.